Thank you for subscribing to Sheila Lives Out Loud. We're sharing some of our best lessons from the show as we count down to a new season. Here's my motivate. When we think about freedom, we think about titles, we think about jobs, we think about spouses, we think about having a lot of money and then we're going to be free. But for you, freedom means something else. Let's go back to the beginning with your story. It's um, quite a story. Um, I started out just like any other child, um, very inspired by my father, who was a banker, and he was a professional banker for three decades. And growing up watching him, I, very, I got very inspired to also work in the banking sector because it gave us a lot of, again, freedom, financial freedom. Our school fees was always paid. Um, bills met on time. It really looked awesome. And um, as young as I can remember, when I was nine years old, I had already made up my mind that I wanted to become a banker. So I put in all my efforts in my studies to see to it that that dream became a reality. And indeed it did. I went, cleared primary school, went on to high school, and finally joined campus and studied banking and finance. Um, graduated, got into the marketing, into the market world, and there I was in the banking sector. And as I grew the career ladder, seven years into it, I unfortunately handled a fraudulent transaction, unknowingly. And all I thought that the worst that would have happened to me was losing my career. Uh, because people had to go home, some had <coughs> to be demoted, and things like those. So I braved myself for what the outcome of the investigations would be, knowing very well that the worst bit would be losing, losing my career. Job, yeah. yes. Something that I had worked on so hard, put in so much effort into for close to two decades of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was so painful. You know, knowing Just that knowing that's that what's... this is what could happen exactly. because of this thing yes. that you were totally non-responsible exactly. for. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, that was not the worst thing that turned out out of that situation. Eight months after handling that fraudulent transaction, I got arrested, I got charged, and yes, I lost my job. But the worst part was two and a half years later, after being arrested, losing my career, and being charged in court, I got convicted to serve a whole year in prison for conspiracy to defraud the bank. The magistrate dropped the theft charges and said there was totally no evidence whatsoever that I stole the money. But on a probability, of conspiracy, then I was going to serve a whole year. And I had never, I had never ever imagined that it would come to this. Because even when I got arrested and charged of stealing the money, I prayed every bit of that journey. Every single day in those two and a half years, I fasted, I prayed. I knew that I would be vindicated because not only did I not steal that money, I did not know it was a fraudulent transaction. But the theft charges were dropped and I got convicted. It was a really tough moment for everyone in the family. My parents stood by me. They believed that I hadn't stolen that money as much as there were rumors going on, a lot of bad talk behind my back, they believed that I was innocent. And for that to come, no one, it was so out of the blues. We didn't expect it. It was so unexpected. And in these two and a half years, I got married and I had just been blessed with my firstborn daughter, who's now six years old. And my husband was very optimistic that 
come judgment day, you'll be set free of the charges. So we were dealing with, you've now been convicted, you're a new mother, how exactly do we deal with this? Right. And it was such a low moment for everyone because along the case, the two and a half years, there was no evidence whatsoever. So we weren't preparing ourselves of to defend this kind yourself of, exactly. because you there's understood. no evidence. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And then so it was now making a decision of do you leave the little girl? Do you go with her to prison? What exactly do we do? But we didn't have much time. The How police old was were, your daughter at the time? She was only three months old when I got convicted. She, was, she had just turned three months and we went for the judgment. Mm. And so it was a very quick decision that we had to make with my husband that I had to go with her because we wanted her to continue breastfeeding as much as we did not know how the diet would be. How will this place be? But she was the only one that I had with me at that time. Mm. I lost everything, Sheila. My reputation was gone. Everything that I had worked so hard for, you know, during my career, everything was gone. Everything. There was nothing else I could hold on to other than the faith that I had in my creator and that as much as justice has not been served, it will one day be served. And now the only physical thing that I could have with me was my daughter. So there was no goodbyes um, escorted with, by the warders and the gangs and mm -hmm. all of a sudden walking free to now, you know, A being guarded. Life, yes, to where your you know, time is no longer yours. Exactly, and I remember my husband trying to tell me something, but, and he, he was right there told, this is no longer your wife, she's now a criminal, you know, she's, she now belongs to the state, and it was so rough, so everyone was just in tears, yeah. and rode in that bus and got into Langata Women Maximum Prison. I couldn't believe it was me. I couldn't believe it. It was another pinching moment for me, for real. From the corporate world to the maximum facility in Kenya for women. Mm. What went wrong? My parents putting in so much effort to bring me up as they did, mm. invest in my education, all the effort that I put in, working so hard, in my dream career, and then everything flipped, and I'm now sitting in prison. It, it just couldn't add up. It just couldn't add up. Could you pray? What were you asking God at this time? All the questions that I was asking him started with a why. Why, why, where were you? You know, from the day I handled that fraudulent transaction, couldn't there have been something assigned, something to just indicate to me, don't touch the transaction, it's fraudulent. Mm. To the investigation's time, couldn't you have done something, God? Why didn't you answer our prayers? Why weren't you just this time, like you say you are a God of justice? And I asked those questions and was in that self-pity party for about three months three months of remembering the clothes that I had bought for my newborn daughter, three months of remembering all the work that I had put in into my career, three months of asking so many questions and trying to reconcile the world that I've come from and where I am at the moment, where there are no plates to have a meal, uh, no doors, nothing is private, um, to take a bath is a privilege, um, no cologne, no, you know, makeup, no makeup, no nice your clothes. Hands because they feel a little dry. Exactly. It's just this uh, striped um, uniform. You know, dress that, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. me, I, I just couldn't comprehend. 70% of the women who I was having time with had come from very disadvantaged backgrounds. Mm -hmm. They had never, ever been to a class illiterate and what happens is these women are busy trying to make ends meet and in that trying to survive end up in petty crimes and it hit me that 
I had the opportunity of even having legal representation. These women, once they're arrested, do not even have legal representation. They do not even understand the charges that they're up against. And that really start, started making me think, I have more blessings. I can't keep asking God why. I have had more. And when I leave this place, I will rebuild my life. And I knew very well that my parents were still going on with my appeal case. So I let that rest and left it to God. When he comes through for me, then I will be glad. And I had all the faith that he would come through for me in my appeal case. But in the meantime, as I continue with this one year sentence, we've got to do something. For the rest of this story, please click here.